You and Peter sat across from each other in the library. A steady date between the two of you wasn't uncommon. Peter being unable to focus because of how close you were also wasn't uncommon. After all the hectic things going on lately, Spider-Man patrolling, physics tests, fighting bad guys, trying not to die, the usual. You just wanted some time to yourselves to relax and study. Don't be mistaken, Peter was very interested in physics and speed and force and all that good stuff. But right now, he was a little more interested in finding out the name of the perfume you were wearing that made you smell so damn heavenly. After an hour of quiet studying and the occasional game of tic-tac-toe, Peter closed his book. If you looked at another momentum equation, his eyes were going to bleed. I can't do it anymore, Peter whined, shoving his books towards you. I can't do another equation. Yes, you can. You didn't even look at him as you continued your work. Stop being dramatic. Peter let out a loud, overdramatic groan and pulled your pencil out of your hand. Come on, let's play a game, he said playfully. You shut your book, knowing when your best friend was at his wit's end, and looked up at him. He had a deviant look in his eyes that compelled you to shut your book as well. What kind of game? You asked cautiously. You knew you had to keep studying, but you were bored too, so you entertained the idea of a game. I bet I can make you smile just by looking at you, Peter declared with a cocky smirk. You scoffed at his smugness. You were never one to back away from a challenge, and Peter knew this. Oh, you're on, you challenged, rescuing your pencil from his grasp. Stare me down. You moved your books aside and leaned forward, resting your head on your hands. Peter did the same, just a few inches from your face. All Peter did was stare into your eyes, but you were already starting to crack. You fought the urge to smile, but when staring at a face like that, it's hard not to. Between his stupid brown eyes, his stupid crooked nose with stupid freckles, and you wouldn't even get started on his messy stupid eyebrows. Peter Parker was a sight for sore eyes. Not that you'd ever admit that to him. He was your best friend, after all. Nothing more. But damn if he wasn't cute. Peter intensified his stare, leaning even closer to you to the point you could smell his excessive body spray. You could already feel yourself burning up and you didn't know why. All he was doing was looking at you. Why did you want to smile so bad? Peter grinned at your fidgeting. You did everything you could to keep from smiling. You bit your lips, held your breath, looked away, thought of sad things, but nothing helped. Finally, you cracked. A bashful smile lit up your face and you looked down in defeat. Oh, damn it, you muttered into the table. Okay, you got me. Peter laughed in triumph. <laughs> I knew I could do it, Peter said smugly, basking in his wind. Now, let's make a little deal. You picked up your head and smirked, ready for a rematch. All right, I'm listening, you said casually. Peter returned the smirk. He had a devilish gleam behind his eyes, one he only got when he knew he was about to push his luck. You briefly wondered what you were getting yourself into. Something wicked brewed in his brown eyes. He was up to something. Kiss me if I'm wrong, but... I can make you smile ten times during the school day tomorrow, Peter bet. It was a bold move and he knew it, but he'd been crushing on you long enough. His subtle hints were constantly going over your head and Peter had just about had enough. Even if you didn't reciprocate his feelings... At least he'd get a few million dollar smiles out of it. You, on the other hand, didn't pay attention to the first part. You only cared about the challenge. Specifically, you cared about winning. We have ourselves a deal. You held out your hand for Peter to shake. He shook it, surprised you were actually going along. But prepare to lose, you stated as you got up to leave. Peter was still swimming with confidence after winning your game. He snapped back to reality as you collected your books. Wait. Don't you want to see if you can make me smile? Peter asked, not wanting to go just yet. You stopped putting your books away and smiled. I already know I can make you smile anytime I want, you said matter-of-factly. Peter furrowed his brows. Really? he asked. How? Remember when I kissed you in fourth grade because those boys were teasing you on the bus? You smiled at the sweet memory. A couple boys started picking on Peter, saying he was a loser who couldn't get a girlfriend. You shut them up instantly by planting your lips on Peter without a second thought. It was both of your first kisses, and also the last kiss Peter ever had. He wasn't too interested in girls that weren't you. With that, a huge grin spread across Peter's boyish face. 
all it took was that one memory to light up his features with a dopey smile. You grinned at the sight of your blushing best friend. That's how, you said suavely. See? See you tomorrow, Parker, you called as you left the library. Peter watched you leave. Hate to see you go, love to watch you walk away, Peter sarcastically muttered to himself, a wicked smile suddenly dawning on his lips. The next day, the challenge was on. Ten smiles in one day. By first period, you were losing already. Peter made you smile by surprising you by your locker with the rose, the first smile of the day. Okay, okay, you rolled your eyes as you accepted the flower and gave a discreet sniff. But don't expect any more out of me. But he did. He got you leaving study hall by slipping you a note asking for your phone number, something he obviously had. Dear Yasmin, I lost my phone number. Can I have yours? Check yes or no. He drew two lopsided boxes at the bottom of the note. You couldn't stop the smile that came breaking across your face like the first signs of dawn. You scribbled in the check no and shot Peter an angry look. He was looking quite proud of himself and held up two fingers, indicating that that was the second time he'd gotten you to smile. You threw the note at the back of his head and went to your next class. Peter got you going to and from lunch by slinging his arm around your shoulders and wishing you a good day. I hope your day isn't anything like you and math, because then it'd suck, Peter said in his phoniest sweet voice. He booped your nose while he was at it, and you quickly swatted it away. Aww, and I hope you choke and die, you said in an even sweeter tone. He got you twice during math by shooting you a wink and blowing you a kiss. You turned around in your seat as red as your math textbook and heard him laughing behind you as you tried to focus on the lesson once again. He got you once during gym by purposely falling off the rope you had to climb. Parker, you climbed it perfectly last week. What happened? Coach Finstock asked as he scribbled something down on his notepad. Sorry, Peter apologized with fake sincerity. It's just that I saw Yasmin and got distracted. He pointed at you and made a heart with his hands. You tensed up as kids around you laughed and made comments. Coach Finstock looked like he accepted Peter's excuse and wrote something else down in his notes. And he got you two times during your presentation in history by making funny faces. When you were finished, Peter started clapping as loud as he could and stood up in his seat. He got other kids to stand up for you as well, going on about how well you did and how researched your presentation was. Soon, the whole class was giving you a standing ovation. You smiled again at his idiotic but sweet action, making that three times in one period. You were losing this bet fast. Finally, the day ended. You'd managed to avoid Peter for the rest of the school day. Peter met you by your locker after the last bell with his face dressed in a cocky grin. Well, Parker, guess you lose. The goal was ten, and you only made me smile nine times. Looks like you don't get that kiss after all. You shrugged dramatically and let out a sarcastic sigh. Peter shrugged as well and bit his lip, nearly bursting with excitement. Actually, I do, he said with a knowing smile. You immediately frowned. What do you mean? You asked. The challenge was that I could make you smile ten times and you had to kiss me if I was wrong. I only made you smile nine times, so... Peter clicked his tongue. You opened your mouth in shock. You were wrong, you finished. You couldn't believe it. You had been outsmarted by a guy in a Star Wars t-shirt. Peter stood there gloating while applying a copious amount of chapstick. I'd like to collect my prize, Yasmin. I won fair and square. Peter pretended to stretch and yawn. You licked your teeth and bit back a smile. You had to admit, Peter got you good. He'd won that bet fair and square. You're an idiot. Do you know that? You asked Peter. Peter stepped closer and shot you a cheeky grin. An idiot whom you have to kiss? Peter poked your chest. Ah, curse his proper use of grammar. That's the price you have to pay. Now, pay up. Peter grabbed a random bottle in your locker and sprayed it in his mouth. He immediately tried to hide his disgust. <coughs> so, Peter said between gags, that's perfume. You nodded as you watched him grimace. You thought it was breath spray? You asked for confirmation. Peter nodded while he wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I still won. Peter laughed meanly, stepping close to you. In your face. In my face? You pointed to yourself. Peter nodded. 
how so? You took your own step closer and folded your arms. Because I just sprayed perfume in my mouth and now you have to kiss me. Peter puckered his lips dramatically and made a loud kissing sound, making your entire face go red as it caught the attention of the people around you. There were enough rumors flying around about the two of you after the stunt he pulled in gym. Let me get this straight. You clasped your hands together. You just sprayed perfume in your mouth? Yes, Peter confirmed. But it's in my face? Yes, Peter said again. This very much seems like it's in your face, you told Peter, who still didn't get it. Nope, yours. Peter wasn't one to admit failure. Come on, Yasmin, do it while my mouth still tastes like... Peter read the bottle of your perfume. An endless weekend. At least he finally found out the name of your perfume. His shit-eating grin returned to his face. You sighed and looked around for who might be watching. When you didn't see anyone of significance, you turned your back to Peter. You hesitated for a second more, then grabbed his shirt, pulled him close, and kissed him. Just like the first time way back in fourth grade, his eyes flew open, then fluttered shut. His eyelashes tickled your cheek as they went down. You found it funny how history repeated itself. You got to live that memory twice. Luckily for Peter, this was his favorite memory. It always put a smile on his face, just like you did. You pulled away when the kiss lasted long enough and wiped your hand on the back of your mouth. You taste like chemicals, you grimaced. Peter was still foggy, post-kiss haze. He hadn't fully recovered yet. Huh? Uh, uh, what? Peter started out. His head was still spinning. You laughed at him. He looked ridiculous. Hair messy, shirt wrinkled, their lipstick on his face. Completely ridiculous. And completely because of you. You did some nice work. You couldn't help taking out your phone and snapping a picture. Hey, Peter, you said from behind your phone with a toothy grin. Smile for me. Peter gave you a lopsided grin before putting his hand in front of the camera. No fair, Peter pouted. You caught me off guard. <laughs> Whatever you say, Parker. You shrugged casually. But for the record, I totally won. I can promise you I'm the one who won. Peter mumbled sheepishly under his breath. He looked at the floor to hide the enormous blush on his cheeks. He never thought in a million years you'd actually kiss him. He was only joking, and hoping he would. You'd once again managed to leave Peter speechless. Well, it was a pleasure doing business with you. You stuck your hand out for Peter to shake, suddenly feeling awkward and shy around your own best friend. Yeah, uh, you too, Peter stuttered. He shook your warm hand with his clammy one before scuttling away. He felt like he floated home. He waltzed into the apartment with a dreamy smile on his face. May was quick to notice Peter's trance. Peter? May asked. She wondered what the cause of her nephew's moonstruck expression was. Hmm? He barely replied as he started humming the melody of your favorite song. May cocked her hip and laughed at her nephew. <laughs> What's got you so happy? May inquired. What's that? Peter asked in such a dream state he could barely hear her. I said... May tried again. What's got you so happy? Peter let out a happy sigh and spun around in his kitchen. Yasmin, he replied, your name like a prayer on his lips. He didn't even feel worthy to say it. May chuckled. She should have known. So you have a thing for Yasmin, huh? May asked. She already knew the answer. Peter just shrugged as he continued to twirl around the kitchen. Uh, maybe, he said. I don't know. She just... Peter couldn't think of the right words to describe you. She just what? May pressed. Peter smiled at the memory of the afternoon. She just makes me smile. Managed to leave Peter. Peter, Peter grabbed a random bottle of oil. <laughs> Yo, this part. Dude, what? <laughs> I hate this part. It's so funny. He did what? Oh, God. <sighs> okay. And now you have to kiss me. Fuck yeah. Demonetize. <laughs>